This is the time in the service when we want to lift up the prayers of the people, and I am truly amazed. Neil, I just saw you in the hospital last week, uh, having your hip replaced, I believe, <laughs> something like that, and, and here he is. So praise be to God for great healing in his life already, and there's miles to go, I know. You still have rehabilitation that you need to do, but uh, I hope you are in less pain than you were before. Um, so, so good to have you here. Um, we want to be in prayer for Ann Sanders' sister, Susanna, who had a procedure this week. Uh, Lisa Tuttle has a friend that she's asked us to pray for with a cancer diagnosis. I, too, have a friend that was just diagnosed this week with cancer. Uh, so let's lift up all of those folks. And then Janet Webb, they are not here today, but we want to be in prayer for Janet. She's having surgery tomorrow. Um, Sarah is home from the hospital and just in time for... I mean, for rehabilitation, just in time for all the family. Charles said, all the family is coming tomorrow. Uh, and so she got home just in time. We're so happy for that. And you may have noticed that um, Jennifer and Derek are not here with us this morning. Uh, Jennifer's father, Tim, has really taken a sudden turn and is in hospice care. I visited with them last night, and I am... asking you just to please pray for them. Um, it's a difficult time in any family's journey, but they are facing it with the love of Christ and with the help of family. So please be in prayer for them. <clears throat> we want to call your attention to all the names that are in our bulletin. Uh, continue to lift up every single one of these folks. And then, of course, we have a huge shout-out to Clay and Susan Allen, who were inducted into the Middle Georgia Cattlemen's Association Hall of Fame. So some good news, too. Uh, we're so happy for that. But let's be in prayer for all of these people who are listed here and others that may be on your heart. If you have a prayer request you'd like to share with me, please fill this out and give that to me after the service, or you can give it to one of the ushers as well. It is our honor and our privilege to pray with you. Uh, the church office will be closed most of the week, so we won't be sending out a lot of the material that you are used to seeing. Uh, so just be aware of that. But we will have a bulletin for next Sunday service. We will have a bulletin for Wednesday night service. We're doing the essential things, but we're giving our office staff some time to spend with family, and I know you honor that as well. So let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thankful for the healing that you have already brought and expectant of the healing that you have yet to bring. I will always pray for miraculous healing even when it seems impossible because you are a God who works miracles. So however that healing comes, Lord, we accept it. We welcome it. Lord, I pray that you would walk with each person as they continue in their recovery, as they learn to deal with a difficult diagnosis and the treatment that that involves. We pray for those who are awaiting surgery, that you would give them a peace that only you can give. And I thank you, Lord, for a congregation who cares enough to reach out to each of the people on this list and let them know that we are praying for them, whether it's with a card or a phone call or a visit. Thank you for those who are willing to go in your name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Commitment. What does it mean? What do you think of when I say the word commitment? What does that trigger in your mind? Uh, today is a Commitment Sunday. It's the day that we commit our work to, to God, that we promise to uphold it with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Um, we commit to support our mission of making disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. That's why we exist, and we need your support to, to keep the doors of this church open and continuing to operate. This is God's work we do today. Well, I checked Merriam-Webster for a definition, uh, not in a paper dictionary, but on Google. Don't you just love Google? 
Uh, so I Googled it, and here is what commitment means. It means an agreement or a pledge to do something in the future. I thought, what a beautiful word. I want to share a sweet story as an illustration. How many of you have uh, boxes of old videos, VHS tapes, Super 8, maybe even film for some of you, uh, in a box in your home? Does any, am, am I the only one that has boxes of that stuff at their house? Well, obviously, with the events of recent days, I long to see my husband again. And so I finally paid the price. I never transferred that stuff because it's expensive. Uh, but I decided, and my, my kids helped me with this, that it was time to send some of those videos off. And, and I received those while I was away this past weekend, living another uh, unfulfilled promise that my husband had made to me, visiting New York for the first time. When I got home, do you know what was waiting for me? Yes! The digital copies of all of those videos. Now, some of them, and this is a lesson to you, don't wait too long, some of those videos are lost forever. Uh, they were unable to transfer some of them. Um, and they date back 35 years, those videos. <laughs> so we've been videotaping for a long time. But when I got them, the first thing I did was starting, started to watch those old movies. Anybody else do that? I put that uh, flash drive in my computer and I was mesmerized. And for hours, I watched. And it was such a blessed thing to hear the voices, to see the faces of those I had loved and lost, not just my husband, but my mom and my dad and my grandmothers. What a gift. As I watched those videos, I got to relive the moment when I first held my children in my arms. Do you remember, if you have children, what it was like to hold them? And you promised you would do anything for them. You would do anything. Parents often put the needs of their children before their own needs. It's a sacrifice that we happily give. That is a beautiful definition of commitment. Think about how much we love our children. God loves us even more. God gave everything for us. God gave us his son so that our sins might be forgiven. That's what love, that's what commitment looks like. We give out of thankfulness for all that God gives us. Today we take a look at the third and final general rule of John Wesley, devised for the people called Methodist. And this rule reflects our commitment to Christ. To paraphrase, that, to paraphrase that rule, that third rule, it is that we stay in love with God. It is a commitment we make when we accept Jesus as our Savior. Our scripture for today's Thanksgiving message, our message of commitment, is Colossians 2, 6-7. through 7, And we're going to read through that in a moment. But first, I'd ask us to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. I pray, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear and a heart to respond to your word spoken into our lives today. Amen. Hear now the word of God from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, and it's on the screen there for you. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Loving God is the last of the three general rules, and I've been gone for a minute. Uh, so I thought it might be helpful to just review all three of the rules. Here they are. Do no harm, do all the good you can, and stay in love with God. Now, staying in love with God is vital to our growth as Christians. 
Staying in love with God is really a paraphrase for what John Wesley said. And in the original rules, it said, and I'm quoting now, that those who believe in Christ should evidence their desire for salvation by attending upon all the ordinances of God. So that's fancy words, and I boiled it down. Actually, Reuben Joe boiled it down in his book, Three Simple Rules, to stay in love with God. Then in, in, in the book of Discipline, Wesley lists examples as the public worship of God, the ministry of the Word, the supper of the Lord, family and private prayer, searching the scripture, fasting and abstinence. These are all practices or what we might call spiritual disciplines to actually evidence our love of God. As Reuben Job summarizes in his book, Three Simple Rules, Stay in Love with God. That is a wonderful rule, right? Stay in love with God. That's what God calls us to do. Now, how many of us remember that first crush we ever had? Uh, did you ever have a crush on anybody? I hope so. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, do you remember that first crush you had? And I, I remember when you, you had that first crush, you just want to spend all your time with them, do everything with them, tell them about everything, and you're just overflowing with, with just excitement and joy and passion. And then what happens over time if you continue to spend time with them? The passion fades. And we allow the distractions of this world to, well, distract us. They distract us from the one we love. And it's like that for us as Christians, too. If you remember when you first, when it really first sunk in what Christ had done for you and you wanted to give your whole self to God, there was a, a passion and an enthusiasm. And I pray that we experience that every day of our lives for the rest of our lives. But sometimes we need to remember that first love. When we first acknowledge Jesus as our Savior, we're excited to read the Bible. We're excited to spend time in God with prayer, to attend church, to support the church with our gifts, to serve others in the name of Christ, to, to tell others about this new love. I saw a girl in a restaurant yesterday and she had a t-shirt on and I really wanted to talk to her about it, uh, but I didn't. It said, meet the new me. And I have no doubt that she got that t-shirt at her baptism. And I thought, we've got a confirmation class coming up, and I think we're going to have some Meet the New Me t-shirts for confirmation. I love that, and it had the name of the church on the back. We love God, we're excited, but then slowly, often without even noticing it, we allow the world, we allow the distractions of this world to become our focus. Now, I could be here all day listing things that distract us from Christ. Could be football. It can even be family. Friends, shopping, hunting. You fill in the blank. Whatever it is that distracts you from that love of Christ. There's so much noise in the world. It can be hard to focus on things that are truly important and if we're honest with ourselves this often includes God our failure to focus on God we get so distracted by the things of this world that we push God aside we move God down on the priority list we come to church when it's convenient we give when it's convenient we pray when it's convenient Here's the funny thing. I think everything, every single one of us would agree, if you're here today, I take that as your assent to this statement, but I want to spend eternity with Christ. Amen? Don't you want to spend eternity with Christ? I want to spend eternity with Christ. And yet sometimes we don't spend time with him today. We allow the distractions of this world to get in the way. 
We make excuses for not staying in love with God. We make some excuse for not spending time in prayer or attending church or giving our tithe or serving others or sharing our faith. There's some good reason why I can't talk about Jesus. Well, friends, there is no good reason why you can't talk about Jesus. Not a one. When we join the church, we make a commitment. We make a promise to uphold the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Upholding these commitments is the way we show that we're still in love with God. By honoring these promises we made, it's a reminder to us of what matters most in our life. We don't do these things because it's required of us, because it's what is required of, for us, for our salvation. No, Christ's finished work on the cross is why we are saved. I want to be clear about that. Our works, the things we do, don't save us. God alone can save us when we submit our life to him. All of these things that we're talking about, this is evidence of the fruit of our faith. We don't do these things because we have to. We do them because we love God. Now, for some, it is a burden, a duty to be performed. For others, we consider it pure joy, pure joy to love God with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. When we are in tune with the Spirit of God, our hearts are changed. Our lives are changed. And the way we live each day reflects that. I was talking to someone this week, and I think she's a Christian. We talked about it. She, she kind of didn't really answer me when I asked, so I'll ask again. But she wanted to hear about my call and and she wanted to understand. She said, now, was that like a light switch or a gradual thing? And, and I was given an opportunity to talk about how God has moved in my life. How my life changed after I truly surrendered my life. But when we're in tune with the Spirit... It gives us an opportunity to share that when we put God first, everything falls into place. Those opportunities to share that love come up naturally. Putting God first in our lives reflects our commitment to love God with all of our heart and soul and strength. It reflects our commitment to live our lives in Christ, to be rooted and built up in Christ. And we do it all abounding in thanksgiving to borrow this morning's scripture with thanksgiving in our hearts so church today is commitment sunday what will we give what will we give are we ready to commit our financial support to god's holy church it's been my experience perhaps it has been your experience as well that whatever I give, God takes it, blesses it, and somehow multiplies it. It starts with just me being faithful with the little bit that I have. And God takes it and grows it. Scripture testifies to that. I want to share Malachi 3.10 for you this morning. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. What a beautiful prophecy from God. Put me to the test. As we come to the close of the service today, I want to invite you to bring forward your pledge card. Lay them on the table in the front. 
You may have already filled yours out and left it at home and do the best you can. You can even write on here, I'll bring the real one next week. Uh, that's okay if you cannot remember the figures, but if you can remember the figures, go ahead and fill it in. Uh, you can put an IOU in there, like I said, if you need to. Um, but if you haven't filled it out, please take a moment to do so now. We place the card in your bulletin to make it easy to stay in love with God. After the hymn, we'll do a special commitment of these commitment cards, recognizing that all we have, all we give, comes from God. God says that when we bring our full tithe into the storehouse, God will open the windows of heaven for us and pour down an overflowing blessing. I'm ready for that. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Open, open the floodgates of heaven and pour an overflowing blessing. All I can do is my part, but God says that's enough. Let us each do our part. Today we have an opportunity to give thanks to God for all that God has given us. May it be so in our lives today. Amen.